Hello everybody, it is Monday and if you will get your Bible to Exodus 28, if you are in a, a place where you were able to grab that, if not, feel free to listen and, and go back and read the passage uh, later on your own. But here in Exodus chapter 28, we're going to see this week uh, garments that God called for the priests to have made. And so Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving, we saw last week, the instructions, the blueprints for building the tabernacle. And this week, we're going to see in Exodus chapter 28 how the Lord God gives Moses instructions on how to form and, and create and craft the priestly garments that were to be worn. And so today, we're going to take a look at Exodus chapter 28, verses 1 through 4. We'll look at these four verses today. So I'm going to read these four verses, and then we will uh, walk through them a little bit, verse by verse, and see four points of application if you're, if you're taking notes today. The Word of God tells us, Now take Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me as a priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as a priest. Excuse me, as priest. Verse 4, And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons, that he may minister to me as priest. We see point number one actually in verse one of our text today. And that is that God chose and called by name Aaron and Aaron's sons. This is a powerful truth that we as believers also share in. Every single believer has been chosen by God and has been called by name to salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus has drawn us to himself through the gospel. He knows us personally. You have worth because the Son of God knows you. You are not worthless. Jesus did not die on the cross vaguely for just some people. No, he died specifically for you. He knows you by name. He chose Aaron. He chose Aaron's sons. And he called them by name. And he has called us by name. What an encouragement that is that the Lord calls us by name. He knows you. Have you opened your heart to receive him? Have you surrendered your life to him? I pray that you have. He is worthy of all praise and all honor and all that we have to give. We then see in verse 2 that the Lord instructed holy garments to be made. These garments were, were coverings. They were to make these coverings and they were to be beautiful and they were to be holy. Now the word holy in scripture uh, not only refers to God, but it refers to a certain aspect of God's nature and also of our relationship as believers with the Lord. Holy, the very word entails within it the meaning to be set apart. Not set apart just meaning you're separated from everything else, but set apart for a special use. The Lord God is set apart from all others. He is holy. He is, is completely without sin. He is completely separate from everything else that is tainted and by sin and the fall. The Lord alone is separated from all of it in perfection and beauty and holiness. And we as believers are called to live a set-apart life, set apart to the Master's use, set apart to live a life for His special purposes. That's what it means to be set apart. Holy sometimes is, is misconstrued to simply mean a, an extreme moralism or even sometimes there are certain denominations or certain belief systems that refer to themselves as the holiness movement. And many times there's a loss of what that really means. 
in Scripture, the holiness of God almost always, from what I understand of, of having studied Scripture, almost always is referring to being set apart, to being coming apart and coming aside, specially devoted, wholly devoted to the Lord's presence and use. We then see point number three in verse three. And this one I think is very, very important. Let me read this verse again. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me, that's the Lord God, to me, capital M, as priest. There were gifted artisans. And let me read this specifically to you, because this was such a powerful truth, I believe this verse reminds us of. Gifted artisans ministered to the Lord for the priests. They ministered to God himself on behalf for the priests through the specific work of making garments. These gifted artisans who were skilled in weaving and skilled in sewing and skilled in the craftsmanship of making fine apparel that would hold up, these artisans ministered to God himself by crafting and doing the work of making these priestly garments. It's interesting, I think, because the priests were going to, to go before God on behalf of the people. And yet the people had to go before the priests on the behalf of God to prepare these garments that would be used in the service of God. Very interesting how there is a connection there between both and how God uses everyone's gifts and everyone's skills. And notice these artisans have been given the spirit of wisdom. We're going to see later on that the Holy Spirit has gifted these individuals to do this work. Let me be very frank with you, brothers and sisters. Spiritual gifts are far beyond just teaching and preaching and evangelism. And sometimes those particular gifts are, are idolized. But the Lord God has called us to use all different types of spiritual gifts. There is a craftsmanship. There is working with your hands and service and helps that is used by God for His glory. These garments were to be beautiful. They were to, be, they were to even bring glory to God by the very appearance of them. So today, I would dare to say, God calls and gifts those who can do beautiful things with the work of their hands, bringing Him glory and honor and praise. And through beauty and through skilled craftsmanship, God can be given glory and honor, and the gospel can be given if you will, a, a reflection. Many times today in churches, there is a great emphasis on what is known as multimedia or the media arts. A lot of this is done electronically through various mediums, but also through crafting perhaps stage props or something that pastors use as they teach the Word of God. All of these ministries matter. They're not second rate. They matter. And the Holy Spirit gifts individuals to use those in a beautiful way for the glory of God. We then see in verse 4 today of chapter 28, we see this particular clothing items that were needed for these priests. And we're going to see throughout the rest of this week, Lord willing, we're going to see these particular items. So I'll just mention them briefly today. We're going to see a breastplate. We're going to see an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven in tunic, a turban, and a sash. These garments would be made for Aaron and for his sons, for them to do the work God was calling them to do as Levitical priests. Father, today we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, how there are lessons for us to be reminded of, even as we look upon the very clothing that the priests were called to wear. Father, at times there are symbolic meanings that we are going to see. At times there are doctrinal and theological uh, meanings and, and reminders that we are given through these things. But Father, today I thank you that you have called by name, that you have chosen and appointed your people to do a specific ministry for you. Father, as we see skilled artisans that are called to your work, Father, we are reminded that you, by your Holy Spirit, gift in varied ways, in a great diversity of gifts, you choose by your Holy Spirit to apportion those gifts for the glory 
of Jesus Christ, that your beauty and your glory might be proclaimed and represented, Father, to all the nations. Father, we thank you for your grace in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the anointing and the present and dwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. Father, help us to realize that you are worthy of all praise and that we have worth because you love us. Father, remind us of the truth of Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, that you loved us while we were still sinners and demonstrated your love. You displayed your love for us, that you went to the cross while we were still dead in trespasses and sins. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.